Hi, my name is Christy, and this is the American Chinese Food Show, where we analyze historical artifacts like vintage menus, recipe books, photographs, and text to tell the stories of American Chinese food. Today, we're going to take a quick linguistics lesson. How did Mugu Gai Pen get its name? What is Mugu Gai Pen? Mugu Gai Pen is the romanization of the four Chinese characters that mean mushroom, chicken pieces. Chinese writing is logographic. That means every symbol either represents a word or a minimal unit of meaning. The total number of Chinese characters ever to appear in a dictionary is in the tens of thousands. A college graduate who is literate in written Chinese knows between three and four thousand characters. That would be me. I learned how to read and write Chinese characters by repeatedly writing the same words again and again and again since kindergarten. So if you did not grow up in that environment, romanization is your friend. Romanization of Chinese is used to provide a useful way for foreigners who are not skilled at recognizing Chinese script to read and recognize Chinese. An example will be, let's say, a horse, ma. It will be romanized as M A Ma. Pinyin is now the international standard for transcribing the Chinese written language based on the pronunciation of Mandarin Chinese using Roman script. This replaced the earlier popular Wade Giles system of transcription. That's why Peking became Beijing. But if you look at Chinese restaurant menus in the United States, they are romanized. In a variety of ad hoc romanization schemes that are just not standardized in any way, and the spoken language is romanized from is not even Mandarin Chinese; it's either Cantonese or Taishanese, both a dialect of the Guangdong Province in China. Cantonese has over 80 million native speakers in southeastern China, Hong Kong, Macau. And overseas in Southeast Asia, most notably in Vietnam and Malaysia, whereas Taishanese is spoken in the southern part of Guangdong, it is a dominant variety of the Chinese language spoken in Chinatowns in Canada and the United States because a lot of the early immigrants to North America originated in that area. Sometimes when I walk in Chinatown and an old grandma needs help or something, she will usually speak in Taishanese with me. Which I will do my best to understand, but not really. Which gets to my next point. Cantonese and Taiwanese don't have a whole lot of mutual intelligibility. I'm going to say is a little bit worse than Portuguese and Spanish. Honestly, dissecting old Chinese restaurant menus can sometimes be hard, even for me, a native Cantonese speaker. My dad speaks Taiwanese because his grandmother raised him in Taiwanese, but I am very bad at it. So let's take the 1905 menu from the Oriental Restaurant in New York City as an example. Can you tell if it's in Cantonese or Taiwanese? A lot of the differences between Cantonese and Taiwanese are tonal. So when they're transcribed, the Roman script will actually be exactly the same.、Um, for example, if you look at the broiled and roast,、um, you see the third item, fo app, f o a p.、Um, it means fire duck, so it's just roasted duck. In Cantonese, is fo app. In Taiwanese, is fo app. If it's transcribed, it is F O A P. Seem to be fine for both. But we have some other big clues from this menu to tell whether it's Cantonese or Taiwanese.、Um, the big one for me is actually the last item in the menu: crystallized ginger. Crystallized tea is basically candied or、um, sugar ginger.、Uh, in Cantonese, it's tong, tong gong. But in Taiwanese. Is Hong Hong Gong. So this leads me to believe, huh? Maybe this one is a Taiwanese menu. And then I see the item under rice. The first one, Andoi. That's 
absolutely Taiwanese. Uh, doi is a very specific Taiwanese pronunciation. It means um, a little boy or little. And here means lunch. So the, this five cents item is like a little lunch. So why does it matter? <laughs> like why does it matter whether it's Cantonese or Taiwanese? Well, the combined use of Cantonese and Taiwanese created quite a lot of confusion um, in Romanized Chinese items in menus. It led to some differences in Romanizations, for example, like noodles. Right? I believe it's now standardized now to men, M-E-I-N, so chow men. But at the turn of the last century, you can see spelling from M-E-I-N, M-I-N, min, to M-A-I-N, main. Um, it's because in Cantonese, um, noodles is min, so it's more like M-E-I-N. But in Thai Chinese, it's actually main. So it sounds more like main, M-A-I-N. Chop soy, on the other hand, is definitely Cantonese. Um, because chop, it means mix. Um, in Cantonese, is zap. In Thai Chinese, it's actually pronounced as dap. Dap soy. So going back to the original question that I asked at the beginning of the episode, how did Mugu Gai Pan get his name? If it's romanized from Cantonese, the spelling actually would be different. It should be pin, P-I-N. Um, as seen in this menu from Shanghai Lo in San Francisco in the 1930s. Because in Cantonese, it's Mugu Gai Pin, Pin. But in Thai Chinese, is pen, the correct romanization would be P-A-N. Mogu Gai Pian. So there you have it. Mogu Gai Pian is likely transcripted from Thai Chinese. I'm not sure how useful this episode is for you all, but I find it fascinating that today when an American orders in Chinese restaurants who has no knowledge of the Chinese language, he or she is actually saying a combination of Cantonese, Taishanese, and Mandarin. How cool is that? If you like our content, subscribe to our channel. See you soon!